Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. I say chat is really more of a lecture, I guess. <laughs> it is somewhat interactive. Anyway, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, this is episode number 905, and the topic today is um, untying the knots of past relationships. And I jokingly said, bring a knife. Um, that's a metaphor, and I'll explain more about that in a moment. Before diving into the topic at hand, let me choose myself and explain why I do these talks every day, and also why you may want to watch them. Um, this is a Facebook Live, by the way, in case you're watching on some other platform, because it starts here and then gets propagated out to other places. Propagated? Yeah, that's the right word. Um, so, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. You may have seen my name around here somewhere to indicate it's me. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, to make your life and relationships better than they were before. I'm biased. It's a good book. Um, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what informs my work and also what started these talks, which I should say inspired these talks almost three years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Now I have to keep it MFTM because it's easy to make room for the title by doing that. But that's what the full title is, so you know. So these talks are generally aimed towards women, but they can be definitely applicable to men. For quite a few of the talks are not gender specific. And it'll help you if you're going through, if you've gone through a breakup recently, this one in particular, rather. Sorry, let me rewind. So it started three years ago, now we're episode number 905. This topic today is kind of applicable to anybody who's gone through a breakup or has got partial relationships that seem to keep hanging around energetically. Because they do. Usually in here or in here, you know, heart or head. Heart or head, one of the two. So the thing is actually from, a, I saw this in a post a little bit earlier from a friend of mine going through like clearing up old relationship stuff and should say, dealing with some forgiveness stuff, which I'll talk about forgiveness in a moment too, that really gets in the way of her having what she wants in her healthy relationships. And I was also um, joyfully interviewed today for a, a podcast that'll be coming out, I think either later this month or early December, which I'll post a link for if you're watching. Uh, if you watch my wall and you follow me, you'll see a post about the podcast soon. And the question was about why am I called the love doctor? And I did talk about that, but I'm not gonna go into the details here because you gotta watch the podcast, but it's a reason why I do what I do. If you watch my broadcast, you know I cover a whole gamut of talks about relationships, about self-support, self-esteem, self-love, um, how to be in a healthy relationship and how to have one with yourself particularly. But part of the work I do, and from my background in psychology, I do a lot of work with helping my clients heal their wounds from past relationships. And I said one reason I'm called the love doctor is because I help women heal their broken hearts. And it's the truth. But a lot of that comes down to, for most people, again, not just women, but men as well, with past relationships that didn't work out especially, or that ended in a, a painful, maybe traumatic way, leave scars on our hearts, energetically speaking. Those scars, though, don't they're not like you have a scar that you wear from a, from a battle where you go like hard won and you're really feeling good about it. Those scars actually hurt because they impede your ability to love more. In fact, and I've talked about this before, um, one, of my, one of the talks I was at a few years ago now was Barbara DeAngelis talks about how the idea of us having going through relationships and not healing our past stuff, stuff is a technical term, is that you have to imagine that our love is like an ocean or, or a, a sea. And that sea is moving, flowing, graceful like our love is when it's fresh and when it's open, when it's real. But if we go through um, breakups and painful upsets in past relationships, we're kind of blocking our heart. The idea of being in, in, in this metaphor, imagine you're basically putting icebergs on top of the ocean. The more breakups you go through, the more unresolved healing, you, sorry, unresolved wounds from the past you carry around, the more ice flows, blocks, bergs, fill up the ocean so there's no movement. Because if the, if the ocean's covered with ice, it doesn't flow. That's basic, you know, climate science. Well, not climate science. It's basically just the ge geology of the planet. Simple stuff. But that metaphor applies to our heart as well, as strange as it seems. So what happens energetically for ourselves is after breakups that don't get resolved with a, um, a place of wholeness, or don't, don't break up cleanly it's like you carry around these these ice picks stuck in your own heart and you're not whole and free to love properly again so each relationship after that 
becomes less and less available if you express your love. Same, same as that metaphor about having the ice on top of the ocean. As it cannot move and express, same as your heart can't, ex open, can't move and express its love for the new person because it's, it's scarred up by past breakups. I should say one thing, by the way. Those scars are not permanent. You can take them off, but it takes certain skills to do that, which I'll get to in a moment. So just to pound this point home a couple more times. If you're like most people, and most people have done this, I'm sure. I haven't researched the whole population, but I feel it's the way we do things, because human beings do that. We come out of a past relationship, break up, painfully upsetting, whatever that was, and we'll tend to lick our wounds. Well, some will, some won't, just to be clear. I mean, mostly, generally, women will tend to lick their wounds, tend to, not all. Men tend to be like, move on, next, next, next. That's kind of how we're driven. But we still have wounds inside. Again, this applies to both genders. So we go through life going through or going, dropping our past relationship and then like licking our wounds for a few minutes for some people or a few days, a few months, and then looking for someone to love us enough so we can forget about the past relationship. And this is a mistaken approach, by the way. When you're looking for love to help you forget the past, it's like basically being an, an alcoholic. You know, uh, you know, alcoholics, you know, they drink to forget their, his, their past or forget their life. If you don't heal your past relationship wounds and traumas and pains, looking for someone to distract you from that pain is the same as going and getting drunk. And let me be blunt about this. It's not as addictive necessarily, but it's just as ineffective. And numbing out your pain from the past by meeting somebody new isn't fair to you or to them. That's why I'm adamant about talking about this stuff. That's why I talked about it a few times in different ways. But it's coming through this way today. So a couple of things I am emphatic about you doing when you go through when you sorry when you are between relationships and when you're ready to release your past relationships properly as i said numbing them out fit, trying to trying to forget them over time burying them isn't the solution and i'd also say post-mortems aren't recommended either so when i talk about bringing a knife i mean a certain thing about this so let me explain the way to release your past relationship wounds, I'm trying to think of another word for it, but wounds seems to be appropriate in this case, requires two things, three things really. The intention to heal from your past relationships first. So the, first, the intention is the first thing you've got to set always. When you set the intention, you can do action. Um, secondly, actually there's four. There's four things now. Okay, so that's one. Secondly, you've got to be willing to forgive yourself. Now forgiveness, this is the thing I want to say. Forgiveness is misconstrued so many times. When you're doing forgiveness work about somebody else, it isn't about them. Be clear about that. Um, when you're, hi Cindy, nice seeing my broadcast. When you're in forgiveness, what you're actually doing is letting yourself off the hook. Forgiveness is a self. Um, it's like having the it's, ha it's having the keys to get yourself out of your own jail cell, which you had all the time, but you just didn't want to apply it. So, and I'm speaking emotionally speaking. So that emotional jail you put yourself in can be opened, and you can be free from it by applying it forgiveness to yourself. Now. Yes, forgiveness does involve the other person in its framing, but you're not forgiving them for what they did. You're actually forgiving your judgments about what they did, which is a very different animal, different thing. So, and I'll provide a link at the back end where you can reach out to me to get the forgiveness worksheets that I provide for my clients. And also, there's another one I provide from Carla Tipping's book, Radical Forgiveness, because I recommend that book as well. So that's one piece, is forgiveness. Because forgiveness is really letting yourself off the hook, as I mentioned. When you let yourself off the hook, you're not stuck in that past relationship. Now, about the knife I mentioned, there's a there's a uh, a form of energetic technology, if you want to call it that, which is called cord cutting. Now, there's different forms of it. I know, and one I practice, I've used before myself, which is is a metaphysical. It sounds weird to say it that way, but it's about the energetic of intentionally cutting cords to cut off emotional ties to something. And it's a metaphorical knife because you're not going to do anything physically with anybody. Just to be clear, I'm not, I'm not promoting or condoning violence or anything like that. But what you're doing is you can do things, in a, and this one actually I recommend doing the shower. It's actually a, it's a very interesting place for me that it works for me because the shower helps to flush energetically things off of you. So knife, so so cord cutting the way I use it, and there are other forms. Just so you know, it's not the only form. But one of the forms of cord cutting is to imagine the connections that you have between you and past relationships. This can happen with anybody, whether it's co-workers 
or family members or even partial relationships. So this is not just tied to partial relationships, it works with anybody you want to complete with. So you, you basically imagine having a, a cord that could be running from the front of you to them or from the back of you. And this is the thing you want to be aware. And you've got, you got to be willing to trust this. This is not something you say, oh, it's easy to do. For some it is. But you've got to trust into your intuition, your own internal sense. Because what you're doing is you're actually feeling into which person is hooked into you and you're hooked into and how they're hooked into you. Because for some people, it might be a thin thread that goes out from your heart to them. For some people, it's a tree trunk, energetically speaking, from you to them. And also, sometimes it's in the back, it's in the back behind you, because sometimes it's where you feel like you've moved on, but they haven't, and you can feel the energy of that, where they're still like hooking into you. Imagine someone throwing grappling hooks into you. It's that sort of feeling energetically. It's not physically painful, but it can be emotionally painful. So cord cutting is the act of actually cutting those energetic cords. And you can use your hands like blades, or you can pretend, imagine you have a sword in your hand or a knife in your hand, hence the knife metaphor to cut those off. And again, I recommend doing it in the shower with the intention to do this because when you do cut those cords, those energetic cords, it is a form of freedom. You are letting yourself off the hook and disconnecting from them. But I do recommend you do that th uh, third. Third, 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 yes. So again, first is the intention to be free. Secondly is the forgiveness to make peace with the past. Third is to cut the cords from the past so you can be free. The fourth one I mentioned is to learn from what happened. Now, this is a different piece of the puzzle. So if, again, you've already gone through first the intention, you've got clear of the matter forgiveness and the cord, uh, cord cutting, which is basically disconnecting and releasing you from the energetic and emotional hook that's in there, so you're free. The fourth part is to look back now clearly because you're not, so you're not invested anymore and see what it was that you did to create, participate, involve, attract, be in that relationship. Because if you don't want to repeat it, it's good to learn from your mistakes, so to speak. And I'm not saying it's a mistake, but to learn from what happened before. So understanding that you have an ability and freedom and opportunity to really complete your past history so you can move forward freely changes everything. This is really, in some ways, not the, well, it's one of the main, I mean, talk about the three aspects of my work. This is one of the biggest aspects of my work, though, because if we don't do this, as I mentioned earlier, you're basically numbing yourself out going forward. There's only so much room you have in your heart to love if you keep blocking it off and, and getting it covered up in scar tissue that you're not willing to let go of. But if you're willing to make peace with your past, not just to ignore it, but to make peace fully with it, forgiveness, cord cutting, etc., then you can actually move forward into a new relationship with a clean slate, like a tabula rasa, so to speak, like being, like in some ways, a newborn babe, so to speak, but with the wisdom of what happened before. This is the ideal, is that you move forward freely into your next relationship with clarity, intention, no attachments, no past baggage, no, no, no steamer trunks full of crap, energetically speaking, and you bring the wisdom from the past with you to know what you do differently going forward. You have that sorted out, it will transform your dating life, it will transform your relationship choices, and it will utterly transform your ability to be in love the right way. This is, I'm giving you a, like a slice or a, a look inside the work I do with my clients, but this is what you can do for yourself. So as I mentioned earlier, I will put links in the comments for my forgiveness worksheets, both mine and also the one from Colin Tipping, which is Radical Forgiveness, because they're both applicable in your life to help you forgive the past. But again, start with intention, get clear about your fact you want to be free of your partial relationship, do the forgiveness work to make peace with your partial relationship, do the cord cutting, and then learn what, learn what you can from partial relationship. It's a four-step process. It's not patented, it's just what I know works. I can't help. You can reach out to me and I'll, I'll guide you through this process yourself. So again, I'll put a link in the comments for the forgiveness so you can reach out to me for the forgiveness worksheets and I'll put some links in the comments so you can get some help. Because when you do this work, it always help, It does make it easier when you work with somebody who can hold the space for you. Again, as I said with my interview I heard earlier in the podcast, I'm called the love doctor by my friends because I hold space for them and help my clients really heal their hearts the right way. And this is part of the work I do. So I thought I'd give you a slice or a taste of what it's like and how it works. So if you are dealing with this or you're not willing to deal with this and you want to get some help, reach out to me. I'll put links in the comments so you can find more help with me, including, um, again, a link for the forgiveness and a link to reach out to me for a conversation if you want to go through and really go through a conversation. If you really want to have... <laughs> let's say I come to Jesus talk. I'm Jewish, that wouldn't work. If you want to have a real talk about this and you want to reach out for help, I'll put a link in the comments for that. Um, I'll also put a link in the comments for a couple other things. Um, 
my self-love meditation because that always is, is as I said earlier it's one of the mainstays of loving yourself first to be in a healthy relationship if you're in a relationship or you're single loving yourself more is a good start good way to be recommend it highly and for those who, ladies of you who are single and you've done the work then I'll also put in, the, put in the comments my signature course which is called Attract the Man You Want because once you've done the healing part of the work you want to know what you're looking for the right way it ain't just a right swipe on an app you want to be clear about what you want and this is the course that will help you get there so with that um, so I put those three four links in the comments I hope this makes some sense I mean this is vital once you get this it changes your life and allows you to have healthy relationships going forward and lets you make peace with the past in a way that is healthy whole and freeing um, I think that's really it I want to say I didn't cover this so much in the, in the podcast but it was what provoked it was what, what um, was inspired from my talk again the podcast to be out I think in a couple of weeks so I'll put the link to that when it shows up um, it was a fun conversation with my friend my new friend well, actually we've known each other for a while but we didn't connect to recently um, but anyway that's, that's for later so this makes some sense this is a this will change the, your life and it's a game changer for your relationship experience if you haven't done this before it will shift everything so again links will be in the comments all four pieces and um, I think that's about it let me think else I want to drop on that one whilst I'm thinking about that let me just remind you if you haven't seen my broadcast before how you can find my broadcast um, I do this broadcast every day at 5pm Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook you can join me live at 5pm Pacific at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby replays go to my business page which is Barry Selby the author you can like my page there although Facebook hasn't been very good at keeping all of them there it just puts a certain number of them up there for some reason and then you can find the replays in full every single one of them all 900 plus on my my uh, YouTube channel because I do make them up on YouTube for safekeeping so if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby there's a channel which is mine there you can subscribe to my channel there's a playlist on there called messages from the masculine where all of these live and you can search, search through for keywords or message or titles or whatever you want to look for to find the ones you want to watch or you can binge watch them if you want that's a long type though it's 900 plus broadcast it's quite a bit of content um, and that I think is about it I'm trying to think there's, any else, there's nothing else about this I want to share basically you've got the four steps and I'll put the four links in the comments so you can find out how to get help um, my invitation to you my recommendation to you my encouragement to you is if you haven't made peace with your past stop living there take the steps to heal resolve and release your past so you can move forward with grace with ease and with full presence so you can fully embrace and enjoy the future that's my calling that's my service it's my work and if you're in the place where you're stuck with that and you want some help I will help you get there comment links will be in the comments as I mentioned and I invite you to take care of yourself that's why I keep saying every day please take care of yourself because this is part of the journey when you take care of yourself you can then take care of other people and you can serve your own relationship and serve yourself I thank you for being with me, with me as always every day look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow that's the plan and as always please take care of yourself I'll see you again tomorrow bye